Who doesn't like an otter? They're such wonderful, playful creatures. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolourist based in Berkshire and every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique I wish I'd known about ages ago. But this week I thought we'd put loads of those into practice painting this otter. So if you enjoy it, please hit like and subscribe and it'll get shown to more people. I like to start any painting by doing a quick sketch. This is absolutely rough and ready. It's just done on a bit of photocopier paper and it's really my planning document. By doing a little sketch, it does help me work out if any of the proportions are a bit unexpected, just so that you really identify lights and darks, big shapes, things that you want to leave out, things that you definitely want to put in. I've actually slightly twisted this from the original photo because I thought it gave a more interesting composition. This also helps you plan your steps and gives you a little route map. So I'll start, I've actually forgot about step one which is sketching it onto my paper. I'm then going to mask the whiskers because they are so important and I'm going to splatter in a few drops of masking fluid for those lovely droplets that appear on the whiskers so that'll be my step three I certainly let the masking fluid dry and then I'll start to paint start with those dark eyes and work outwards um, and then yeah so eyes outwards probably nose I would have thought next round here body and then sort of um, the water. But that gives me a little route map of which way to go. It takes five, ten minutes to do that, but will save you a lot of heartache because you'll have a plan. Having planned the painting, it's always worth considering and planning colours. So I think those colours would be rather lovely, and that's what I'm planning to use. It's a good idea to swatch things out together, work out whether you want a very harmonious um, palette and these are all very close together. But you could decide that you want to do this as a rainbow or with contrast and complementary colours. The decision is um, far better made now. You've got your colours planned and you don't introduce something that happens to mix to make a very nasty colour halfway through. To check whether your masking fluid is dry, simply touch it. Does it come off on your finger? In which case, it's if it doesn't, we're all drying good. And if it does, let's see about that one. No, that's OK. Yeah, that's still coming off a bit. Then we need to leave it longer. So I'm going to start with the eyes and I'll start with probably this this eye here simply because I'm right handed and if I start with this eye and then do that eye I'm likely to smudge. I'm going to start with a really dark mix so I'm using a bit of that grey and I'm looking at the highlight. Now that highlight is not white, it is has got a tone to it but I'll come back in and do that later. So the eye is effectively that shape. Then there's a wonderful dark shadow sort of round the edge. Now with clean water I can start to pull some of that away and if I do again with my clean water and come round carefully leaving a little gap between the eye and that water and then just bridging it it will spread round and we can start to form sort of the bags under its eyes I know they're not bags but that's kind of what they look like to me I think it would be fun to have other colours in there to spread out. So that was a bit of perylene violet. 
And then we're going to come round here with clean water and just sort of herd some of that, that colour and spread it as we go. And you can see now why it's nice to have those whiskers masked because if I was trying to paint around them negatively, well, they'd just end up a total mess. Now we've got those lovely little sort of dark centres to the ears. And I want those to be joined on, not just sort of stuck around the edge. So that's why I've joined them like that. And then again with clean water, I can just sort of pull that down and let let the colours mingle. Drop whatever colours I want to in at this point to mingle on the paper as long as I pay attention to where the lights and darks are and I'm putting in some of that burnt sienna because danger is this all becomes a bit grey and cold and I want to have that fun um, playful nature of, of the otter going on and that wouldn't be helped by a really sort of cold dark palette so there's a bit of that lovely gold over the top there and I could spread that out and come to the second half here this can spread down into the cheek And if you sort of stroke your animal in the direction of the fur, you'll get interesting marks. So let's do exactly the same with the second eye. Before I go any further, I'm going to sort out the nose or the nostrils and I realise that in my sketch I probably haven't done that nose quite wide enough so I'm just going to widen that, come down and get the shape of that nose. And this a tickle to get rid of that hard edge and then come down into that cheek and make some patterns with my rigger to make the markings of where the whiskers come out of patterns with the water and then I can drop some colour in and they'll sort of follow round. sort of down and that spreads into the shadow of, of the mouth. Again I just don't want a hard edge between those two. I'm going to do that same process of just using my rigger to make little patterns in the clean water that the paint will flow through it's it's about mark making and making it interesting for the viewer and maybe it's, you could even drop in a bit of that surprise pink here that would be rather fun so again just making the two sides a little bit different just for, for interest I've got my paper at just a few degrees of an angle just got my board propped up on a reel of masking tape so that just helps some of the flow. Right, if we just come back into the nose itself. Again, I'm going to use my rigger 
and I'm going to sort of there's a shadow area there and if we look closely there is sort of a bit of pattern on the nose so if I do what I did on the cheek area and just make a little bit of pattern with clean water and then let the paint sort of move up through it I think that will be all right so I'm going to leave a few gaps like that little white gap there so that we don't the head doesn't disappear into the body totally and I'm stroking in the direction of the fur and remembering that we've got dark down here that's quite nice I'm going to pop some yellow in just to feather its way through there to balance up so your eye doesn't get stuck on this area and come back over here I mean, the body isn't terribly important, obviously it's to the otter, but not to us in our painting. So just doing that with a big brush and getting a bit of interest, but not calling too much attention to it. I think we need more dark over here. And definitely want some more dark around the bottom of the body. Now let's sort out this chin. Now I want to soften off. This is dried enough that if I just run a damp brush over, it'll just knock back some of those highlights. I'm not sure I can do much more at this point, given how wet it is. And I've got most of the animal in. Right, the first layer has dried. We can tell that by using the back of our hand. If it feels cool, that means there's still water in there. And if it feels room temperature, it's, it's nicely dried. This would be a good time to get rid of any stray uh, pencil marks. But be careful because if you rub over your masking fluid, it'll lift that as well. I'm going to go back in with my dark and sort this out and then I'm going to do exactly what I did before coming round with clean water this time I'm sort of trimming it and I'll leave that as my little sort of dark area what I plan to do is sort out this background. Now in the background here, it's because we're looking down at this otter, this is calm water here and then there are going to be ripples around the body. So I'm going to use cling film, sarin wrap, um, to do those ripples I reckon. So I'm wetting the entire background. This buys me time because it's quite a big area. And if I went in with paint while it was on dry paper, it might all be dry before I come back to work it. Make sure this doesn't go too dark because I want my otter to stand out. Let's get rid of those. That's overly stripy. Now... The ripples are going to be slightly darker area and the reason I'm using the cling film is that it does darken and pull the colour. So I'm pulling the cling film round so that I get shapes and lines in the direction I want. But I'm trying to only have it in certain areas. I 
don't want it everywhere. And because I put that water on before, I have actually got quite a bit of time to work this. Whereas I'd be slightly panicking if it, if it was all drying before I got the wrap on. And we leave, need to leave that in place so it can dry. The cling film should be dry now so we can remove it and see what it's given us. Removing masking fluid is easy. You just rub it gently with your thumb or you can use an eraser or well, there are special tools called masking pickup tools but I'd rather like the process of just rubbing these off. Now should you have left it on for a long time do this with particular care in case it has bonded with the surface of your paper and you might find that certain papers like um, cardi papers which are quite soft and absorbent you might find that they do rip so do be super careful okay so we can see what we've got now first thing that strikes me is that I need to go darker in places in this water and those eyes need sorting out because the highlights are too too bright and then I want to get colour into these whiskers but otherwise yeah we, we, I can see where we're going so that's always a relief a bit scary when you take that masking off and you think oh yuck <laughs> right I'm choosing a little brush and I'm going to use a little of this perylene violet into those eyes. And I'm going to go for the whole eye. wondering about leaving a tiny white highlight in there whereas I won't over here but I will just what I mean by knocking back is just that I'd left a highlight and it was too too bright because there are definitely highlights or oh, not highlights it definitely lighter but it wasn't that light this is adjustment time and it's all about getting a little bit of balance back into your painting and one layer will show through another I need to be careful because I took off my masking fluid so I don't want to paint over all my whiskers maybe I should have done this before I took the masking fluid off but I was keen to get rid of that stuff I just that sort of splodge there is a bit weird isn't it that came from so we can get rid of some of that now I want to work on my ripples this is about balance and not quite as dark as I wanted I'm going to follow the lines that I achieved through using the cling film just emphasize them so you'll recall I said I really didn't like masking fluid because it left such a, a hard edge and you can see how hard it is so I'm going to add a little bit of color to these not just one color either
Let's just add a little. I'm not trying to paint them carefully as drops of water. Because frankly I can't be bothered and it would be out of keeping with the rest of the um, painting. Again, the whiskers are multicoloured. So I have some watercolour pencils, which is a brand new box. And I'm going to find toning ones. So plenty to choose from. They're gorgeous. Look at the colours in there. But I think probably... Oh, this is called sunflower. And if you dip them in water before using them, you get a far more painterly effect. And actually, I don't think, oh, I think Tuscan Sun, maybe, slightly more orangey. And I could use a rigger and the colours I've used so far. I just thought this might be fun to um, bring a different mark to the painting. I'm not going to go out for all of them. And then let's look for a brownier version. Again, just dipping it in the water. I'm extending some of them. Especially when some of these have got a bit thick. This is a way of sorting them out. Might be quite fun to have a bit of ooh, peony this is called. So you could with your rigger add in colour and to these whiskers. So you can do one, you can do both. If you haven't got enough whiskers, you could uh, use a little white gouache to do something to them, but I think I've got more than enough. I'm going to let this settle for a second or two, just check that I'm happy, and then put my paintbrushes down. Just thinking that balance a nice large splodge would be lovely. And as you can see, I use a syringe. So these splodges look accidental but they are carefully placed for where I want the composition. 